Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, sticking around and staying behind. It's always a pleasure to come out and um, talk with you and, and, and take your questions. This has been a, uh, a very exciting project for us. Uh, it's been over 20 years since Portland Opera last uh, produced. Uh, Humperdinck, Sansel, and Gretel, and it's, it's an opera that I love very dearly and always love hearing. Uh, so this has been a very joyful time. Most of, this, most of the singers you heard today are making their debut with us, but I have asked our maestro to join me for a question and answer period. Uh, so please welcome uh, maestro Ari Panto, our conductor of today's performance. Ari made his debut with us uh, in 2007 as the conductor of the Magic Flute, uh, and it's wonderful to have him back uh, here to conduct Hansel and Gretel today. So we're happy to take any questions you may have about the opera, uh, uh, about the production you just experienced, um, uh, anything else that might be on your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good question. Uh, the question was, in other words, you had a libretto from a recording? Yes, because this, this opera it, it was written by a German opera composer, Engelbert Humperdinck, not to be confused with uh, the pop singer from the 1980s. Uh, uh, and of course, it was originally written in German. Um, we made a choice to, to perform it in an English translation uh, that, that fits this production in a way. Um, and so this is an example where we've done uh, uh, an opera that was originally in another language in English. Anything, anything you would add to that? I'd like to ask you actually, what is the difference from a conducting standpoint in conducting, say, Carmen in French or Carmen in English, or La Boheme in Italian or La Boheme in English? And in this case, Ari, uh, Hansel and Gretel originally meant to be sung in German. What's the difference? Um, good afternoon. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, it's incredibly important that the translation is good. If the translation is good, then there's less of a difference conduct the, between conducting in the original language and conducting in English. But, um, and what I mean by good, is that it's the responsibility of the translator, just like it is of the composer originally, to make uh, the natural flow of the language and the music go together. So the breaths, th think about the idea that you say a sentence in English, you take a breath, you say it again, and you say it more strongly, and all of that is part of the natural flow of the language, and we breathe naturally without ever even realizing it. Now, think of, about the idea that um, German, the structure of German language is very different from, in, from English, and what the role and responsibility of the, the translator, in this case a, a man named David Pountney, who's also a very famous and important uh, stage director, uh, but it's their responsibility to find a way to make the breath work with the music. And for the most part, um, this piece is very successful in that way. Um, and it's partly because the, this kind of music has an ever-flowing quality to it. Whereas, think about what it's like in Italian, where there's the sort of the the flow of Italian opera is is um, very spontaneous, right? And so, uh, a, something like a bel canto opera, it's much more difficult for me in my role to conduct an English translation of an Italian piece because of that natural flow and where the breaths occur and where the high point of the phrase is, than it is this. So um, it is a very important aspect to the piece, but in this case, it works very well. Yes. Yes. To, to follow up on that question, so in order to get the, the um, I guess, the, the meter and all the phrasing correct, they, if they have to, they might sacrifice the accuracy of the translation? That's very subjective. Sometimes it's, Sometimes they sacrifice the accuracy of the translation. Sometimes it's a matter of um, finding, marrying the, the exact word with the general accuracy of a phrase and getting kind of the essence of it. And, but I think that's got to be in their, 
in their mind all the time. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect question. That's exactly right. So sometimes one word that would be the perfect translation or one, one phrase that would be the exact perfect translation from the German into English won't work. The number of words and syllables aren't correct and you can't, the ref is wrong, so. Questions? Yes. How difficult is it for the singers after they stuff their mouths of food to uh, sing? You repeat the question. Yeah, she, the question is how difficult is it for the singers once they've stuffed their mouths with all that food and berries and, and chocolate mousse and gateau and black forest, whatever, uh, to sing it? And the answer is very difficult. And um, believe it or not, part of the part of the rehearsal process was them finding out exactly how they could swallow a big piece of black forest cake and you know come in with the next phrase. And there was let me just add to yeah. that. And there was a fair amount just to pick to add to that. There was a fair amount of time spent in the rehearsal process timing that out. You know, uh, you know, we we would do a scene, and Ari would repeat, would would do it once, and then we time out the food, and then do it again with a meeting, and then singing, and then so there, there was quite a bit of time spent on integrating the amount of eating in the production with with the amount of singing. Yeah. In the, as the director, do you have to coach uh, the singers to become exaggerated, uh, or does the particular production attract people who just simply want to be a Huh. Um, well, uh, first of all, I should say, uh, well, well, the question is, as the director, if I, if I understand your, your, your question, um, do we have to coach the singers to be uninhibited, or is it the production itself that attracts uninhibited people? Is that, am I paraphrasing correctly? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm not the stage director for this production. Uh, it was directed originally by uh, uh, a, man, a man named Richard Jones, and then his assistant. Uh, ben Davis actually staged it here and put it together working with Ari and the singers. Um, uh, and uh, opera singers study their craft. It's very, very um, layered talent you need to know language, you need to know musical style, you need to develop your, vo your voice, uh, you need to learn how to work with conductors and directors. Um, and yes, if you're in a piece like this, of course there's an expectation that you're also going to be able to inhabit roles of children in a way that's convincing and energetic and in the spirit of the music. And I think uh, we were just very fortunate that, that we, we have such a, an engaging cast with such wonderful chemistry. Um, but certainly if you're casting for an opera like Cancel and Gretel, the expectation is, um, the singers that are auditioning for you, the expectation is of course they're going to be expected to be physically very alive and very energetic and and have, and hopefully have wonderful chemistry. Chemistry is not something that you can either conduct or direct in. Hopefully you create an atmosphere where, where singers feel free to experiment and develop a bond. And I think we were very fortunate in, in this, with this particular group of artists that they bonded so nicely. And you really felt terrific chemistry. I certainly do from them on stage. Anything you'd add to that? Um, no, I would basically second it, but the, the exact way in which people are able to be outsized, expressive, extroverted, that's part of the, the, the process, the rehearsal process. So if, if, as Chris says, there's an expectation that, that every singer that would come to a place like Portland, a big company like this, has, has qualities that <laughs> ma makes them want to be on the stage, which is qualities of, of charisma and you know, and showmanship and all that, which means that they, that they have a part of them at least that is open to everything. The, and and the, the chemistry, it's, tr it's true that you can't manufacture that chemistry between singers, but you can put together with great intuition, as, as uh, Chris did, that this group of people will work in these roles, and then, yes, provide the atmosphere, working environment, whatever, to hopefully encourage that. But um, I, I would say the same that Chris just said, which is the particular, they were all wonderful, but every day it was an incredible joy to watch Hansel and Gretel together. They're unbelievably supportive people with each other. They're great artists and great friends with each other. And that is something 
okay. you can be tricked it's by okay. to some degree, uh, you know, in the audience, because of course it's their role to look like they're really brother and sister Heinz and Gretel. But in this case, uh, they were absolutely bonded um, in the rehearsal room, in the hotel, in everywhere. They're, they were great friends, and, and that's a wonderful quality. Yeah, question here. is whether these two singers, Hansel and Gretel, Sandy, Peek, Eddie, and, and Maureen McKay, whether they knew each other before. And yes, they did, but I can't remember. Cosi fan tutte. Oh, they at did. Cosi fan tutte at Sidiapra, yes. Uh, and uh, Is it difficult to sing lying down? Yes. <laughs> Period. <clears throat> yeah, it takes tremendous energy. I, I think you can probably imagine this if you don't know from experience the amount of energy it takes to just stand and sing and fill this entire auditorium without this even piece of equipment. And, and to do that lying down. Yeah, you have to work much harder with your breath, and, and yeah, it's hard, but they do it. Questions? Uh, sir, yeah. Question. The gentleman's commenting that he's here with his daughter, and obviously she uh, enjoyed the show. And uh, you know, is that something we keep in mind? Maybe producing operas that are children-friendly or having children-friendly audiences. Um, the perform. I'm sorry. The, uh, the children-friendly performances. Like maybe one one day where. Yeah. Well, we. <laughs> and there she goes. Uh, well, we, um, we're actually very, I mean, I, I guess my answer is twofold to that question. One is that we as an organization are very involved in the school system throughout all of Oregon and Southern Washington. So we have an outreach tour that goes to schools. Uh, we usually do a one hour opera in English with piano sets and costumes um, and lots of material that our uh, director of uh, education, Alexis Hamilton, sends out about the opera. So we as a company are very, very involved in affecting the lives of students. Um, we also bus in about 1,200 students to each of our dress rehearsals. Uh, and at those, uh, kids often um, come and go, uh, you know, if they're very young, um, and will be sitting with their parents or sitting with their teachers. So uh, I, I, I think I've, um, I mean, I think those are the two main areas where we're involved with, with, with young, young people. Uh, and obviously it's very important to us because we want to develop the next audience. Um, but your thought about special student performances, some opera companies do that. Where the, where, yes, where... Yep, uh, and, and that we do, we, we, are, we are involved with, yeah. Questions? Yes, one back here. I'm really impressed that you managed to get the Met production here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two, what did you have to do to modify the staging at all from the huge yeah. stage to Portland? Well, that's, that's a very astute question. Um, uh, the question is uh, about the Metropolitan Opera, that they produced the same production. Uh, and, and how did we get that production, those sets and customs here? Actually, um, this particular production was originally produced by both the Chicago Lyric Opera and Welsh National Opera. It was a joint production about 10 years ago. The Met then chose to do their version of the opera production, and they built new sets and costumes suited to their theater. The production we have here, the sets and costumes, we rent them. We rented these from Wales, uh, from the Welsh National Opera. So they're not the same sets and costumes, literally the same ones that the Met used. Um, but we produce the opera here. We, you know, we have our local orchestra. Our local